You're welcome back. This is News File. It's your most authoritative news analysis platform. And here on News File, we put Ghana first. Here are my guests for this morning's edition of News File. He's back with the documents. Uh, but today, those of us who were here earlier and saw the documents come in before himself, we made the judgment that the documents have reduced. Yes. yes. Even though there is another load stacked in two or three bags behind in this very place. Okay. So he's back. Abdel Malik Kukubaku, editor-in-chief of the New Crusading Guide newspaper. Thank you very much. Welcome back, sir. Thank you, ma. Great, great. We really missed you. And I was put through the usual ritual of the pressure of being asking, answering questions. Where is Kweku? And yet, I do announce here publicly that Kweku is taking his break, and yet, all the time, people kept asking. Thank you yeah. for um, coming. Now, also here in the studio is Inu Safuseni, the Honorable MP for Tamale Central. Thanks for making the time to join us also. Thank we you. We haven't had you in a while. Thank you, Samson. Great, great, great. He's one of the advocates for quote-unquote mass production <laughs> of lawyers, which the CJ is obviously against. Also here in the studio, Colonel Retired Festus Abwaji, author and conflict analyst. And any time I introduce him, I invite you to take a look at his books, Indigenous African Warfare, Its Concepts and Art in the Gold Coast, Asante and the Northern Territories, up to the early 1900s. Festus B. Abwaji with Forward, Forward by Professor A.B. Asenso. Also, <coughs> He has authored ECOMOC, a sub-regional experience in conflict resolution, management, and peacekeeping in Liberia. And this is the second edition. Um, Kukubako loves this particular one because he likes to read it as well. Thank you very much for making time Thank you to very join much, us please. in the studio. Also here is Joseph Dindyok Penka, the Honorable MP for Timpani and Deputy Attorney General <coughs> happens also to be on that body that has received not too much of good news for quite a while now because of the mass failures at the law school, particularly the entrance exams. Thank you for joining us, sir. Thank you. Right. Okay. So um, we get to action right away. And we will quickly, briefly, because the consensus is that we are tired, tired and fatigued discussing the law school situation. So we'll deal with it very briefly and then move on to questions of uh, allegations of coup plotting and uh, white paper on Ayawasu uh, and um, understanding the regret for the Aisha one deportation. But before we start, Let's get to listen to these um, two clips. The Chief Justice has something to say about the lawyers like Inu Safuseni and myself, Kofi Bento, and the Chief Advocate from afar, Professor Stephen Kukuaza, Kukuaza asking for quote unquote mass production of lawyers. She had a word for all of those advocates very recently, about uh, three months ago, at a meeting with lawyers and judges. Let's hear her. I'm very sad to say that increasingly, those of us who have been uh, too long on the General Legal Council, those of us who spent too long on the disciplinary committee, we have cause to worry because the kind of uh, misconduct are such that there's no way anybody envisaged these categories of misconduct when the uh, Legal Profession Act was even being enacted in the 1960s. In those days, there were, what, 30-something lawyers. Now, 
the coming out of the woodworks. Let us be very careful. And those of you lawyers and those of you lecturers who are busy advocating free scale, free mass uh, admissions into professional law course, mass production of professional lawyers, be careful what you wish for. Be careful what you wish for. So long as I have anything to do with it, it won't happen. Because, because just like you cannot mass produce doctors and surgeons, you must not, Ghana must not have mass produced lawyers imposed on them. If, if people want to do their own law practice, they can go on, 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 on the internet. The, the mem mem members of the public can go on the internet and turn themselves into lawyers if they want to, for their own purpose. <laughs> okay, so my guests are laughing, <laughs> particularly about the very final comment that <laughs> members of the public who want to be lawyers can go on the internet and become lawyers. What she was saying effectively is that that's not the way to become a lawyer. You can get all the information you need on law on the internet, it will never make you a lawyer. <laughs> All right. But this criticism was not only to the few lawyers and other advocates who are asking for an expansion, an opening up of the place. It was also to those who are actually training the LLB students. To uh, Ansansari, the former uh, director of the Ghana, School of, uh, the Ghana School of Law itself, and, of course, to the rector of the Gimpa, of Gimpa, who spoke recently also about what he thought could be done. Listen to the rector of Gimpa, Professor uh, Philip Ebo Bonzi Simpson. The country needs magistrates and circuit court judges and justices across board. They need to be trained from the legal sector. Each municipal, metropolitan, and district assembly requires a full-blown legal department of no less than 10 well-trained lawyers. The Attorney General's department, even prosecutions alone, the Office of the Director of Public Prosecution and his staff can take the entire group of lawyers required in this country. In many American, Canadian, and European jurisdictions, some law firms with their global branches exceed 500, the full complement of people graduated from the Ghana School of Law. I am respectfully submitting that if we do a proper needs assessment, we will come to the conclusion that between ministries, departments, and agencies, district, metropolitan, and municipal assemblies, the judicial system and its courts, and of course, private legal practitioners, as well as the parastatal state enterprises. There are far many more people who are required for the legal sector. And if we then do this study, it will lead us to two. If the Ghana School of Law is not presently able to handle the numbers, the people who train, the people who go out to train, the people who come to train as lawyers can train at a professional legal education. In other words, Mr. Chairman, the General Legal Council can partner with and accredit some law schools to offer the delivery of professional legal. All right. Maybe I start with Inus of Saini. Yes. Of course, we know your views about this. Your views are the same as... Uh, Bozzy Simpson. Uh, Bozzy Simpson, <laughs> Professor Stephen Kukwa, Sari. Yes. And as the platform of the CDD. Yes. Because it's, it's issued a position on it. Yes. Um, and all the others. Why do you think that the CJ thinks all of you the kind of advocacy you are making is dangerous and ought not be considered. The CJ simply got it wrong. Simply got it wrong. 
and still steeped in the colonial mentality of a favored profession where entry must be restricted. That's the thinking of the CJ. But thankfully, she's just an administrator, and she'll go next year. She'll go next year. And I shudder to think of an administrator who is not amenable to change. It's very dangerous. I mean, she was not, she's not an elected person. She's an administrator. And look at how she forcefully made her points. She just came in. Yes, yes. This problem but, has but, been but, with us for but I'm saying at, that, at a so crisis lawyers point for are almost a decade now. Lawyers are accustomed to dealing with issues. What are the issues? The issue is we want, no, it's not, there are not even issues. The issues, we want quality, effective, efficient lawyers to service their clientele. So it's about quality. So how do you solve the issue? You think mass production cannot solve the issue? It can. Quality control measure should not be only be at the top. What we are having now is that we are trying to ensure quality control at the top. So we've gotten the strategy wrong. Even in the old days past, at Lego, before you gain en uh, entry into the faculty of law, <coughs> Deputy Attorney General, you had to hit a pass mark of six, between eight and six. That was a process of assuring quality. They selected the best and the brightest. In the faculty of law, you had to make the first 40, or you are lucky to be among the second 20 to, to, be, to remain at the faculty of law. But it took more than 100. That was quality control. But even with that, with best students selected into the law school, with seven of the students after the first year, some people still came out with third class. Some people came out with passes. So it meant that even when you are able to select, you must, students themselves must demonstrate a commitment to their studies, must work hard, and must persevere. If not, they will still fail. Simply put, all we are saying is that all the courses <coughs> that are being taught at the school, school of law are teachable courses. They can be taught at all, any faculty. At the school of law, it's practice and procedure. Practice and it procedure. It's LLB that you are taught, what is it? Well, the practice reading, and procedure. Yes, teaching. Civil procedure, what is it? Is it not our drafting? Civil procedure. Is it not our drafting? Land law, part of it is drafting. Okay, that's the practice. How to, how to file it, how to draft a writ of sermons. You mean that cannot be taught at the faculty? It can. It can. And that's what we are saying that, one, first of all, let's all agree that we want quality lawyers. And if we so do, we must assure quality control from the beginning of the process, not at the end of the process. So yes. In the school of law, you have superior court judges, particularly often in the Supreme Court, who are providing supervision, even for the, for the lecturers. How are you going to get that if you allow all these over, over a dozen you know, universities now teaching now to do it? That's the fallacy of the situation. Even with the judges providing supervision, we still record mass failures. Not so. They provide supervision, but we record mass failures. It means that something is fundamentally wrong. What I'm simply saying is that we can reform the system. The system needs radical reforms. And that I still hold the view that mass production of lawyers is not inconsistent with assuring quality control. They are not mutually exclusive. That's what we must all uh, Why know. Why do you want to take a path not traversed by the best that we know of. As far as we know by standard, UK, the US is a bit loosed. Is that how they do what you are proposing? Even Nkrumah had not taken a path not traversed by others, we will not have the law school. 
You know, in 1958, when Nkrumah established the law school, what they said about the law school? Those lawyers who trained at the Ghana Law School were of lesser caliber. That was a general refrain. In 1968, in 1963, only nine students passed out of the law school and were called to the bar. Why was it that the law school itself introduced part one and part two? Only nine of how many students you mentioned? Those who got, got uh, admission right. into the law school. Mm. Now, why did the law school introduce part one, part two? Because they had built a facility, they had built a law school. Their main source of supply of lawyers for training was the University of Ghana, Legon. Legon could only produce 60 at most students. So they needed to occupy the space. So they started a part one and part two. We called it then Bakola. The simple reason why they canceled that program is that they did not no <coughs> longer have space. That's a simple reason. Now I'm saying that, so you have a strategy. You had only one higher institution providing a source, your, your feed to the law school. Now you have many institutions. And you still use the same strategy to solve that problem. Repeated mistakes have not been considered as experience. Are we not getting some experience from this? I believe seriously, and I will say it again, that look, General Legal Council must divorce itself from the provision of legal education and concentrate on regulation, regulate the legal, ed legal education, and show that faculties or institutions that want to train people for the legal profession have adequate faculty. Faculty, number one. Facilities, number two. And environment, number three. Because there are students now who sit for law and even make an upper would have seen a well-furnished library. There are students who run who go for training as lawyers, LLB, part-time. And there are students and chief justices right, who study the law on the internet. So yes, so it's about how do you ensure that you have the facilities Her in the university? is quality control and, she says, it's also about character. And that she has sat at the regulator for a long time enough to know that if you were in her shoes, the last thing you will advocate is mass production. Because the complaints that come in about the misconduct is just too much. And the profession is much about character than it is about what you learn. She spoke about uh, lawyers and good lawyers. And we need good lawyers. Uh, Sami, character of the part of a person is an evolving trait. It evolves. No one can say that when you were in, in you might have a general character, but it evolves. That character might be susceptible to some temptations as you evolve. That is why, as a regulator, Continuing monitoring and supervising <coughs> the delivery of legal education and the practice of the profession is important. Okay. This is why it's important. <laughs> so you can use mm. character mm. of a person. I remember when we were at the faculty, mm. a student wore jeans at the faculty, and Professor Mensah Bosu invited the student to the office and asked whether she was interested in <coughs> he was interested in becoming a lawyer. That was the communication. And the student understood. Right. So, and as teachers, apart from impacting knowledge, you mold character. All right. Um, in fact, when you are entering, I'm suppose, I suppose even at your time, you signed the document Don't. requiring you to be of a certain character. Otherwise, you'll be in trouble. And you have someone <laughs> to stand for you right. as well. Okay. Authority. They still do. People yes. have to guarantee. Yes. Now, <clears throat> Kweku, I, I don't know. What's what's your and I and I and I understand where you are coming from before yeah. before we started I heard your comments. What's your street view of what is going on? People say for a situation that has become 
like the norm, the default, <clears throat> rather than the exception. We are told that in uh, 72, 73, thereabouts, Kukwan Sasari tells us of a certain huge failure that happened. And, but that was not the entry. That was those writing to be qualified to be called lawyers. Of course, it does still happen. We go in, our time we went in 200, and then by the time we are getting called, you have 100 and maybe a quarter is being left behind, and so on and so forth. And there are people who may have been sitting there for about five years, and they are never, you know, getting we out of the, the first place. First World War, Second World War, Third so, World War. <laughs> so the problem is entry, and after you enter, how to exit also <coughs> becomes an issue for many people. But people say, for as long as it's becoming the default and not the exception, the leaders, the managers, also have themselves to blame. How does it happen that 1,820 or 22 students who have passed their law LLB exams, write an entrance exams, and only 128 pass? They say that is a commentary on the management and the leadership of the place. What do you say? More so. Yes, I would vote for laying the emphasis there. Okay. But also, I was listening to the CG. Right. Uh, I think she's too conservative. But it's a conservative profession. profession. Oh, it's a profession that must grow with society and be in touch with the modern times. Why do we have so many people seeking to do law? In 1958, we were about four or five million. Today, we are supposed to be about 30 or so million. million. We've opened up the space for education on all levels. Right. And indeed, as the economy expands, you would need the legal dimension to it. So it's obvious that we must open up the space. I'm not saying that just open it anyhow. I've been reading law, studying law, reading law books and things from the street corner. I will never become a lawyer. lawyer. So I would not go to the internet to, to seek to be a lawyer there. <laughs> I think we must open up our minds. The philosophy that Chief Justice is pushing forward is very conservative. It's not going to help this country. An expanding modern society. It is never going to happen. The philosophy you have, the two of you have problems with, received a rousing applause from the lawyers who were in that auditorium I was surprised. and the judges who were there. I was surprised and I wanted to have a clip of those who were clapping <laughs> to know exactly who they were and where they are and where they come from. Something is wrong with the system. Systemic problem, feel why somewhere along the line. We are refusing to understand it. I've been following Mr. Uh, Professor Azar yes. over a long period. He's a, such a dedicated patriot. He's taking this up as if it's his baby. Mm. And he's right. I think it's about time we get a national conversation going and find ways and means of, you know, please reform the system. The CG I, I'm sure she's talking from good, you know, a sincere point of view, but she's wrong. Okay. Sincerity is not a substitute for science when it comes to dealing with such challenges. Mm. So let's hear from the Deputy Attorney General, then we'll come to um, Thank you. Professor Sagwaji here. Thank you. And, and, and Pamka, the fact that you had such a unanimous, you know, welcome of those statements clearly meant that the CJ is not alone in thinking the way she thinks, right? Why is it that you, at the General Legal Council, you at the Attorney General, you in the government at the helm of affairs, think that mass production of lawyers is going to be a danger to society. Well, thank you very much, um, right. Samson. Thanks to your dedicated media platform for this opportunity. 
First, let me make this point very clear. I've had the two have made very, very interesting discussions on this particular matter. Mm. But let me make this clear. The CJ is the chairperson of the General Legal Council. Yes. But the CJ does not, is not an examiner. She doesn't mark scripts. She doesn't set questions. Yes. I want us to put things yeah, in perspective. Right. I think that's you may wrong. be thinking about what she has said. It's a notorious mm. fact. What she has said in respect of mass production. And you can put all the type of meanings you want to uh, ascribe to it. But the fundamental thing is whether or not she has the capacity to directly interfere with pro mass production of lawyers if the people are capable. If which people are capable? The, the students are capable if of you are coming running out the institution in and you say, you say by policy, by policy, for as long as I remain the head of this institution, forget it. You are telling me that down there, somebody can act contrary to that instruction. No, that's, that's a very interesting one. And that's why I'm, I am not, no, I, I, I understand you. And you know, I, I recall that privately, I've had discussions with you about this matter. But my take on Me this matter... We are writing publicly about this matter. You know, I'm tired. <laughs> you know the, the point is this. You see, for example, next week we are going to call about 300 and plus lawyers right. to the bar next mm, week. Mm. You know, 306. I think 306 of them. Yeah. We are going to call them to the bar next week. Now, if you look at the numbers of persons who have repeated and those 128 that are coming to us, you're going to have in excess of about 400 again even in the first year, even though 128 are coming on board. You know, and we still will have just about 4,000 lawyers around the, the entire country in practice, in, in practice. Yes. And out of that number, the statistics say <coughs> that almost 90% will stay in Accra. Your boss said she was looking for lawyers. She mentioned Iyoko as an example. <coughs> And she can't get a quarter of what she needs for the full complement to allow your, your, your very important institution of the Attorney General's Department to function to full capacity. Of, of course. I, I have made it very clear and categorical on this platform that, for example, last year, we asked for 200 lawyers. And then clearance was given for 50. Out of 200, we just got a, a quarter of what we asked for. And this year, we asked for another 200. Clearance has not yet been given, and we're going to recruit. But something, I think we should discuss what CJ has said. The again, question the is, where are you going to recruit from? Because, I mean, there are lawyers in the system. But are you saying that the answer to what we are looking for is mass production? I'm not saying. I, do, I only ask questions. Is it? I agree. <laughs> I want us to understand, first of all, fundamentally, what is mass production itself? And should it be delinked from quality? No. That's why I, I listened carefully to you, and I like the way you went about it. Yeah. The Honorable Inu Safusini. Mm. He's saying that, yes, I'm sure we can nobody engage. has missed the point of quality mm. in talking about mass production. Yeah, so can we keep the debate there? language was mass production? Who introduced it? No, the mass production was introduced she, uh, by, by CJ. A, in, distortion, in a distortion of what people are asking. Uh, absolutely. You see, but this mass production issue that we're talking about, as I said, I mean, you, you said that it's beyond debate now as to whether or not this one should be backed by quality and et cetera. And so everybody's talking about the fact that we need to produce quality lawyers in the system. And that it is not necessarily the case that if we have fewer, then we are going to have quality. That we can have people in their large numbers and yet have quality by raising the standards and all that. I'm not debating that. But Samson, let, let's also turn our mind to something, which fundamentally we haven't looked at. The facility myself and you used at the law school to become lawyers. Has it been expanded? No. It, fundamentally, the emphatic answer is that, that it has never been no, expanded. That facility at Makola has not been expanded. Yes. But it has received campuses in Gimpa and also on KNUST. That is true. It is the reason last year they were able to 
take as many as 467 yes. to enter. Yes. Why can't we have the same Let me give you an example. Look, and this one, I, I, I know that, I mean, it's not any secret, so I have to share it with you. As a member of the General Legal Council, we anticipated that this year we're going to have larger numbers. So we, we put in place measures to ensure that we're able to accommodate them. So we went to UPSA to look for a bigger auditorium in anticipation of the larger numbers that were going to come in. Okay? We went to another private university, I've forgotten the name, to make checks to, to find an auditorium. We made alternative arrangements in anticipation of the fact that we could have had about a thousand or more. So we did. And some of the, we got some of the facilities. But the results turned out that we didn't need those facilities. So it means that we, we by deliberate plan, we anticipated larger numbers. You know. And so it was even a committee <coughs> that was put in place, led by no less a person than the revered and, and respected Jones Doche, JSC himself that did the recommendation and then mm. we agreed with them mm. that we're going to have bigger facilities in anticipation of the numbers that were going to be churned out. Mm. Then it turns out that the IEC bring us the results and out of 1,800 plus, 128 are able IEC to make IEC is the Independent Examination, examination. Committee. Exactly. <coughs> okay. And that one too is presided over by a very respected former Supreme Court Justice. And then a former member of the, a former chairman of the Ghana Bar Association, a mm. president, president of the Ghana Bar Association, is also a member. In fact, it, it is made up of what, very what astute you, personalities. What, what are you saying that we are stuck? That, as I, I, I have become aware, and you have confirmed just this morning, yes. that you got expanded facilities for the Gimpa campus, and you got expanded facilities for the KNUSC campus in anticipation of even bigger numbers for this year. Yes. Unfortunately, they went to write the exam and you were presented with only 128. Exactly. Therefore, therefore, all those spaces, you, you won't proceed with them anymore. Because they should, the, they because the be exam there. results is telling us that these are the numbers that passed. And we cannot, as a general legal counsel, say that examiners go back and remark the scripts and bring us this number. You know we can't do that. We, we can't do that. Because, you see, you, you make do with the results. If, if, if it had come out and then uh, we had it that about 1,000 people passed, we may not be debating the issue now. Mm. But again, let's look at the other professions. What pertains there? The medical profession, for example, the accountants, the marketing officers. What pertains there? If, do we want to replicate that in the legal profession? If we think that we should replicate that, that is what the debate should be geared towards doing. But I don't want us to be creating the impression, the discussion as though somebody has committed a wrong. But what the CJ is talking about? When 128 students have passed... What the CJ is talking about? <coughs> when medical doctors who are not... who don't know their act, who, don't, who have been poorly prepared, kill people, they get punished. Or they don't even kill people, but they give wrong prognosis or diagnosis, they get, they get punished. Sure. When a lawyer, even for overestimating their fees, lose their license for as many as three years. Recently, we saw the bans. Yes. Some lose their right to practice forever. Yes. They can't practice. After all, so many years of, you know, study and expense, That's true. they lose it completely. So what's the problem? The systems are there to check. Yeah. What's the fear? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 I've indicated that, yes, it's true the systems are there to check. But, you see, there must be a criteria for determining who goes to the law school mm. for so long as we haven't changed what is the system now. So I think what we should be advocating, all of us, should be to change the current situation where, by law, people are to write an entrance exam to go to the law school. You know, this now law. This particular thing we're talking about is law. Mm. We made the necessary statutory changes to accommodate that. And that followed what you, you, you rightly put up in your intro, um, the, the, the respected professor. The professor is lost. Yes, to, when yeah. he went to the Supreme Court, and that was the, one of the most interesting judgments that all of us have been examined critically, that the General Legal Council is made up of some judges of the Supreme Court who take decisions, and their decisions were challenged, and some of them participated in it and declared that their own conduct was unlawful. I think we are making yeah, strikes. Yeah. But yeah. substantively, yes. substantively, when you look at the judgment, <coughs> how much, what did they get really? 
it, it is what led to the reform. What did and, the and, and now who went amending, to the court? What did they really get? Amending the LI to allow for the entrance the exam the to be legitimized. Yes. Was that the solution? You know, you know but you, you, see, you see, at every point in time, mm. there must just be a criteria for determining how somebody becomes a lawyer. Okay. There must be. Mm. And it is one of the ways. You see, if we think that a particular <coughs> law is unconscionable all right. and all that, I want mm. to change it. The processes are there for us to. Mm. But I don't want us to, because of CJ's pronouncement, mm. then we, we, we and, and I, I, I saw that my respected uh, elder brother was very emphatic and he was very angry. And, and in, indeed, he took on the, the chairperson of the General Legal Council. But those were her, her personal uh, views, okay, that she espoused. And she personal did so views. publicly. She says, for as long as I am here, forget it. That's not personal views. You That's know, policy. You know, and, and you see, <laughs> you see, um, the Honorable Inusa Fuseni made a statement that CJ will be going. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. You know, and you, you talked about next year. Yeah. That is not even my understanding. I think there's a guarantee that... I, you talked <laughs> about next year. That's not my understanding. It may be earlier. Yes. Maybe earlier, yeah. Uh, yes. Mm. But the most important thing is that, are we saying that because of that one person, what that pronouncement she made, then everybody will have to bow to it. Oh, but you heard, me, you heard me asking. You heard, you heard me asking, how long has this CJ been there? Yes. Only two years or so. And, and she and came the problem, to meet this. The problem has been like she a decade as this. a crisis. Yeah. She came to meet this. So, what so, I know of her, mm, Samson, mm. And, and I want to make this very clear. Yes. I, I have, I mean, had several interactions. Even yesterday, very lively one-on-one -on -one discussion with her. She's very, very strict. She's strict. If you say the pass mark is 30, and somebody gets 30, uh, 29, 29 is not 30. OK. That's it. it, it has this become one of your problems? <coughs> that, that may be my final question to you. That, has this become, because of the, the, the amendments that happened? You know, earlier, previously, yeah. they would do the entrance, entrance exams, yeah. and they would do interviews. That's true. Now, what some of us got to know was that you get the 50 pass, 50, 50 mark pass. Yes. And those who got 50, mm -hmm. those who got, say, uh, 49, 48, would all be invited to the interviews. Yes. And there were situations where you had 49, a number of people who got 49, yes. a number of people who got 48. Yes. Some even got 49 and half, yes. and they would have failed. But through the interview, they could come in. Yes. Now, by the amendment, the interview has been removed. Are you now saying you are stuck with this 128 and you can't do anything about potentially a good number who may have gotten 49, 48, and so on? No, you go into the whole game with rules. So you set out to say that if you get this mark, you have passed. Then people have written the exam. Some have passed. Then you now say that, okay, let's lower the mark contrary to what you yourself had okay. said for yourself. I think we can't do that. Okay. Otherwise, we, will, we may never yeah. end at yeah. anything. Yeah. But something just critically mm. important is the fact that I want all of us in doing this debate, not divorce it from the fact that we need regulations to govern it, mm. and that we cannot open up everything to, to ensure that anybody who wants to become a lawyer becomes a lawyer. It has not, never happened anywhere. Mm. Not all those who want to become teachers have ever been teachers anyway. Okay. Not all those who want to become medical doctors have ever become medical doctors. There must be some, some, some level of criteria set out to ensure that people who are able to go through the process, are, I, can, I can tell you that we may have gone through a conservative process, but as you have rightly pointed out, did it begin with the, 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 the current CJ? Okay. It did not begin with the current CJ. Samson, you, you recall that our time, we did not need to write any exam. No. But even the interview bit you are talking about, mm. I was excited that that was taken out. And I'll tell you why. But by, by, our reason, time, by our times, there were quotas that were being used even. Yes. So, and, and that so, one, they were, so, the, the faculties were giving quotas. Exactly. And then if you passed, you came in automatically. You didn't right. write any exam. Mm. But the interview bit, you know, when it was taken out, I mm. applauded it. You know the reason? Mm. You, 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 people go to write exam. Mm. And then you have some performing so well. But you know, at the interview level, discretion comes in. So you may have a person who got 70% going for the interview 
and not making it. And somebody got 49 and passing through the interview, whether by merit or whatever it is. You know, so uh, for example, maybe, I'm not saying that anybody influenced anything, but it was subject to human error. But now we've taken that out. You see, the amendments we did to take out the interview, mm. that's progress. If the next step we want to take is that let's abolish the entrance exam altogether, that will be another debate. You said taking out the interview is a progress. Yeah, it was a progress that we made. Okay. Because it was, now... It was progress, but now that is, that is affecting the, pro the, the situation. Because earlier, if I didn't get 50 and I got, say, like I have illustrated, I would have opportunity of an interview and I may be qualified through the interview. You could have used that room to now show up the numbers, get the, the needed numbers Something you require. We haven't, but the we MPs, haven't the MPs that. insisted that you remove that and you, you, you removed it. No, we, 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 we haven't said that by virtue of the interview, the marks. The pass mark was lower. I don't think that's a debate. That's now. not what I'm saying. No, the debate mm. is not that at the, by virtue of the interview, we lowered the mark. And now that we're taking the interview out, <clears> we've <throat> upped it. That's not the, the debate at all. Because the pass mark remains a pass mark. Okay. That if you get a particular benchmark, mm. then you've crossed the line. Okay. And then you, are, you, are, you get automatic entry. Mm. You don't need to go through interview. All except right. as we are now about to look at if you have a criminal conviction and etc., mm. and then even though you've qualified, we, we will not permit you to go through the process. Right. You know. Mm. So, but I can understand the passion with which the advocates are actually. What, what's, the, what's the solution going forward for those, the backlog? We we are told there's you know, a backlog some, of, some, of, some, of, of I'm, in excess I'm of how much. I'm a member of the General Legal Council, uh, yes. but I want to make this as my personal opinion. Okay. It is not the opinion of General Legal Council. Uh, yeah. My opinion is that going forward, as a nation. We should open up the system. Thank you. Yeah, that's my personal opinion. Yeah. There's a demonstration and happening up the on system, Monday, this is and what that's, that's I, the hashtag. I mean by opening up open the system. Up legal yeah. education. This is what I mean. Mm. One, that we should try and replicate what happens in other professional areas. Mm. For example, CA and ACC. Go find your tuition anywhere, Where? under the sea, in the air, wherever. Then the regulatory body will conduct the exam. If you pass. And you go through all the criteria like you you have more good moral standing and then etc. You are not having any criminal convictions. You are called to the bar. The advocates have said this because, over the years. Because the reason I'm saying petitions this is that upon petitions. We, we may if we start expanding the facilities at the law school, we may expand it forever. Mm. Yeah. Because the population will continue to grow. Okay. We may expand it forever. And well, we may why, reach why do you think they won't listen to your view you have just expressed? You know, I'm not saying they won't listen. You know. As time goes on and then the advocacy increases and the pressure is mounted, <coughs> by all means, people will have to control. I mean, it, it will eventually become a unanimous mm. decision of the nation. Okay. And if a, one, any one person stands the way of that, you know mm. what will happen, a tsunami. Okay. You know, so I believe that with time, if the advocacy increases, all right. we, all we right. will have to but By, to, by um, the law, yes. by the same law you are working with, yes. uh, Section 15, yes. the Attorney General has power to give directions. And the General Legal Council is supposed to comply with those directions. Is she on not, policy, on of policy. Is she not in, in a position to say that giving the backlog of, uh, we are told about, is it 4,000 plus who are sitting at home, having passed their exams, can't do anything. Some are going elsewhere, other countries, to pay so much and come back and qualify through the post call. Can she say? Let's create a special dispensation for now, at least for the expanded facilities that you have created for this year, to absorb at least a thousand. <laughs> Can she do that? Well, but if the thousand haven't passed the exam, what do we do? You, you see, that is, that is the fundamental question. No, the thing is that you have Unless... the quality. You have the quality. They are first class students who have failed as a result of this test. Yes, that is and true. And we know this test may not be the best way to examine a student who have sat who have gone through how many years of uh, LMB training? That is training. the law now, isn't it? Mm -hmm. it uh, however unconscionable it is, that's the law. Okay. So until changes are made mm. to this provision, okay. then we cannot do anything. Okay. So All if, right. that's why I'm saying if the mm. advocacy increases, okay. and then there's a unanimous decision or a near unanimous decision by all of us, the processes will go through and then it goes back to parliament. I, I remember, right. and, and let me let me yeah. say this, yeah. I remember, I mean, we have very, very good friends in, in parliament, myself yeah. and my, my, my senior here. Mm. He, and he was very, very strong. 
when this thing came to power. Yeah, they he actually was, opposed. He, in fact, he was one of the strongest voices on the floor as far as this issue was concerned. But in the end, you see, even people who are in parliament and studying law took part in the decision. Okay. Um, so, so please, we, 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 we should take okay. it one at a time. All right. And Thank I know you. Thank we'll you. Definitely get there. Thank you. But uh, we're looking for the solution now and also in future. Now, now, um, I, I believe he's a good lawyer. That's he has even qualified well, to be a deputy a attorney general. <laughs> Good but I dare say, mm -hmm. if he had to go through this system, mm -hmm. if I had to go through this system, mm -hmm. maybe we'll I would not have been a lawyer. That's right. No, they will say you fail. What should be done? <laughs> solutions. Before I come to the solutions, let me speak as a lay person. Mm. In my 30 or so years in the Ghana Army, I spent a greater part of it, either as a trainer, instructor, directing staff, or as a staff of the training department at Army HQ. So training, learning, teaching is one environment that has many characteristics that are common hmm. without reference to whatever the discipline is. For instance, we have studied military history to know that the best cadets who pass out from military academies don't necessarily become the best generals. And we have the example of General Horrocks, who was going to be dismissed from Sandhurst, and I think the Second World War broke out. So they said, let Horrocks, horrible Horrocks, go and die in the war. General Horrocks became one of the best British generals. So examinations, per se, are not the best way of assessing anybody's you know, competence and so My issue is that. The issue is about so long as I have anything to do with it, it will not happen. The logic of this statement is that the CJ has something to do with it, even if she's not marking papers and setting questions. And therefore, at the policy level, she is able to influence um, situations. And I think all of you have brought out a number of dimensions of this debate that deliberately restrictions, impediments, obstacles, barriers are being placed in that process to try and restrict either the entrance and, or as you've said, the exit. And that betrayal of that you know, idea comes out clearly that on radio I've heard many people say that when they have failed to enter, some have gone outside to Nigeria, to Gambia, wherever, have qualified and come back and being able to practice. So what is so special about the Ghanaian legal environment that you cannot enter, and when you enter, you cannot exit. Mm. But your counterparts <laughs> or your colleagues <laughs> can exit somewhere or not enter at all and come back and join the mainstream. I am aware, somebody has said that when this Fourth Republic started, it was full of teachers. And I know my own major, I'm concerned, retired. Now the predominant num number of members of parliament happen to be lawyers. Mm. So practicing law is not the only reason why people want to study law. People may even want just to learn the, the you know, the, the, the um, acquire the skills, the expertise, the knowledge of logical you know, review of whatever it is, making debates, making arguments, and use that expertise and skill somewhere, in right. parliament or elsewhere. Mm. My idea will be that going forward, there must be a review you know, for people of all persuasions to come on board and see how best the environment can be, you know. Um, a review of the law, you mean? No, a review of the structure, the system. Okay. Yeah, it is the law that must review yes. the structure. Including mm. reviewing the law, because mm. you need to review the law and replace it with a new text okay. that seeks to attain certain objectives. Mm. But um, it's very troublesome. There's a certain unfair, you see unfair attention to the general legal counsel mm. <clears throat> as against the body that conducts the exams mm -hmm. and those who are training the students. Mm -hmm. Because you must train your students to pass the exam. Mm -hmm. You train them, they don't pass the exam, 
and then you blame somebody up. The one who is conducting the exam is not the focus of your blame. You are blaming uh, those who are in charge of the regulation. I heard <coughs> some of those who didn't make it on radio mm. saying that to start with, you don't get the syllabus. You don't know exactly what you're going to write about. When you fail, nobody comes back to tell you why you failed, where you failed. So you could probably go back and make amends. The results are published. They see their marks, whether well, you pass or fail. But why did you fail? In which subject matter areas were you deficient, for instance? Now, the restrictions, if I use the armed forces and elsewhere, if you're looking for 100 cadets to go to Teshi, then you have 30,000 Ghanaians who are interested in going. Necessarily, you need to you know, find a mechanism of reducing the number and finding <coughs> the best qualified to go. But it is not restricting the numbers. The idea is that given that the Ghana Armed Forces is of the size and the structure that it has now, it does not need more than, let's say, 100 cadets every year. But our colleagues around the table have suggested that, necessarily because our population has risen from 5.5 million since 1957, to 30 million. The economy has, you know, expanded. Mm. Uh, society is changing. Mm. We cannot run the, we cannot meet the legal needs of this kind of society. With the structures that were created or established. But why, are we, why are we also seeking to change the rules here? What mm. is best practice? If you are seeking to enter into an institution, mm -hmm. do you have a right to demand to know whether I passed to enter or I didn't pass? It is only when you enter mm -hmm. and you take an exam whilst you are in there mm -hmm. that you have a right to seek to know why you failed or why you didn't fail. I would suggest, why are we changing the rules for this? I would suggest that it would be helpful for society if there was a report that was published that showed in very general terms why 93% of those who attempted failed. If I applied to enter Harvard and I didn't get, I yes. can't ask this. Why must I be well, doing that for the Ghana School of you Law? You know, our circumstances are different. Last year, I read in, in the narrative here, 80% mm. had failed. <laughs> they went to parliament and petition. Right. This year, instead of the number falling, the number has rather risen. So there is a cause for concern. Mm. You see, around this debate, mm. what we're talking about is what some of us have been talking about national security, okay. which devolves around the needs of the individual. So if people feel that they are being frustrated in pursuing professions that they are interested in pursuing, that frustration alone does not augur well for all of us. Okay. So it ceases to become a legal issue. Right. It becomes okay. you know, something of you know, another okay. dimension okay. that we need to be interested in. All right, so in. a minute for you to finish your point, and then we move on okay. to, the, that, uh, to the next issue that we have to discuss. Uh, yes, Thompson, yeah. Penka has, uh, welcome. Yes, welcome. one minute, one welcome, minute. Welcome, Penka. Mm. But the models are there. The General Legal the, the, uh, Ghana Medical School, assuming they had said that all students who want to be lawyers, I mean, to be doctors, doctors to congregate at Kolebo for housemanship, this problem that we have at the Ghana Law School, would have happened at Kulewo. That's a model. Okay. So you can use, so even the chief justice is wrong. Mm. Because when you go to University for Development Studies and study medicine, okay. they qualify you there. Thank you. Thank course, you. I mean, uh, science and tech, they qualify you there, and legal, they Thank qualify you. you there. Should there be a presidential intervention? Well, leadership, it's all about leadership. Should so there the be president, a presidential president, intervention? president can direct that the, the laws be changed, or a national conference. Or not parliament. Mm -hmm. No, okay. Parliament, Parliament only works right, on thank the directive you. of the president. Thank you, thank you very much. So when we return, uh, there are a few more questions, or a lot more questions to be asked about the work done by Emil Schott and his team, and the white paper, the cherry-picking white paper issued by the president or the government. We'll be right back to ask those questions. <laughs> 